Hello folks. In this video, I am going to attempt to troubleshoot a problem that I'm having with my GE dishwasher. This is a model number GDT695SMJ2ES. And the issue we're having is that the user control board here at the top has stopped responding completely. Um, for a while, we were noticing that it would randomly make beeps, like the sound that it makes when you open the door. When you open it, it should make a beeping sound. Well, it would be closed. Nobody would be anywhere near it, and it would make a beeping sound. And it's done that for months, and I thought that was odd. And then, I don't know, a few months ago, it's stopped working altogether like this. When you open the door, this should illuminate and it stopped working uh, when you open the door. It was just like this. Everything was dead. So we turned off the power at the breaker, uh, left it off for a few minutes, turned it back on, and that seemed to reset something, and it worked for a little while, and then the same problem happened. And I think that's happened two or three times now. Before the power, uh, resetting the power would solve the issue. Now that's no longer getting it to, to work. So... Clearly something's gone wrong, um, and after doing some research, it sounds like it's either going to be this user interface control panel inside the door, or possibly the main control panel, which is underneath the dishwasher. So I'm going to start there. Um, to get to this panel, the door is going to have to come off, um, and to do that, I'm going to have to take some stuff out from underneath, which is going to expose the main control board. So I'm going to start by checking that, and then if... If that checks out, then we'll work on uh, checking the user control board, I guess, or, or replacing that. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is turn off power. Um, I Before I started this process, I did confirm that I do have power underneath here uh, at the junction box. So I know that my issue is not power related. Uh, it's somewhere within the dishwasher itself. Um, if you have a similar problem, I would suggest pulling this lower cover off, which we're about to do, and uh, checking for power at the junction box uh, that we'll expose in just a moment. Um, but again, like I said, I've already done that, so I need to go a little bit deeper. So anyway, this this lower toe kick panel's gotta come off. There's a quarter inch hex head screw here and one here. So let's get those removed and then we can get into the guts of this thing. Okay, you can see I've gotten the toe kick cover panel off uh, and there's some insulation back here so we can just remove that. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I think I'm going to take the electrical junction box cover off here. There's a 5 16 hex head and screw here. Just remove that and this cover will pull, pull off. Uh, so let me do that and we'll move on. Okay, I've removed the electrical junction box cover and I think we can move on to removing the two screws that hold the control board housing in place. So you've got a quarter inch hex screw here and another quarter inch X screw here. Each of them has like a little, at least on my dishwasher, each has a little rubber washer around it. So I'm going to remove those and see if we can drop the control board down. Okay, I've gotten both the screws removed from the uh, main control board housing. So this one and. Uh, Where am I here? This one over here. And you can see the board, or the housing, is dropping down now. But it looks like the back plate of the electrical junction box is in the way. So, this guy, you can see it's held to the frame with uh, what looks like two quarter inch nuts, or screws there. Um, so I'm going to remove those, I think that'll allow this bracket to drop down, which should give us the clearance we need to get the uh, control board housing pulled down. Like I said, you can see it's dropped down on this end, but 
that bracket's in the way. So let me get those two screws removed and I think that's the last thing we need to get out of our way to expose the control board. Be right back. Okay, you can see I've gotten those two screws removed for the electrical junction box and it dropped down, which is allowing the uh, main control board to drop down now. Um, so I'm gonna finagle this out and then we will move on. Okay, you can see I've gotten the control board bracket lowered down and now we can actually see the control board itself. And my understanding is that there is an LED light uh, on the board that uh, should help us troubleshoot what the actual problem is, whether, whether it's this main control board or if it's the user interface panel, uh, which is in the door. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, uh, you know, I've made sure all my wire connections are still, uh, safe. The wire nuts have not come off. Uh, I'm going to go turn the breaker back on to the dishwasher and I'm, then I'm going to come take a look at the, uh, LED on this board, see if it's eliminated. And if it is, uh, we'll try to figure out what the light condition is, whether it's solid green or if it's, uh, you know, blinking. So let me uh, turn the breaker on and we will check out that LED and see what it tells us. Okay, as you can see, I've restored power and our LED is eliminated. Uh, sorry, it's kind of blurry. I turned my flash off just so you could see the LED light, uh, but it, it's clearly illuminated solid. It's not blinking. And my understanding is that um, if it's solid, it means that the this main control board has lost communication with the user control board, which is in the uh, the door, uh, which basically you know connects or drives the control board at the top here. Uh, so, um, so I think this tells me I need. I probably need a new new user interface control, uh, but um, what I would like to do to confirm that is um, check to make sure I have voltage going from this control board to the door wiring harness here. We've got this connector here that we can undo. Um, and then we can check for voltage at the pins on the control board itself. Uh, but we're going to have to remove the connector to do that. I'm going to go turn the breaker back off uh, while I'm disconnecting this. And then we will re-energize it and use our um, multimeter to, uh, to see if there's voltage there. I think we're looking for like 13 and a half or 14 volts DC. So let me go turn the breaker back off and then we will take this apart and measure. Okay, power is turned back off now. So we can kind of rock this. And you'll see right here, there's a little squeeze tab that you can push with your thumb and gently pull and that'll come apart. And that'll expose the five pins inside and I believe we need to, going left to right, I believe we need to check for voltage across pins number two and number five. So counting from the left, the second pin, and then the one farthest to the right. So I'm going to go uh, re-energize the breaker now and get my multimeter, and we will check for voltage on those two pins. and. I think if we've got voltage there, that means that we've either got an issue with the wiring itself going up to the user interface board or the user interface board itself is bad. All right, I've restored power at the breaker now. And again, we are going to check for roughly 14 volts DC current across the second pin from the left. Let's see if I can point to it. So come on camera, focus that one and then the one farthest to the right 
that one. So I don't know that I'm going to be able to film this and have it focus. Um, but what I will do is see if I can prop my camera up and you can watch the voltage on the multimeter and we'll see if we actually get voltage there. Let me see if I can prop this up. Alright, I think that'll stay. So, again, it's the second and the fifth pins. And there we go. So it looks like our main control board is working. It is sending voltage into the wiring harness here. It goes up into the door and then connects to the user interface control panel up, up top. Um, so I think we've eliminated the main control board as the problem. 